In this section of Down the Rabbit Hole, I ask myself a question that you didn't ask on the live stream, and I then answer it. Give us an example of a couple of types of attacks and problems that can happen in DeFi or that have happened recently. So I'm going to give you three different examples of decentralized finance uh, where things went uh, horribly wrong um, and then sometimes got fixed and sometimes didn't. The first one, of course, is the one that started it all, the DAO. The DAO was introduced shortly after Ethereum's birth as a mechanism for a crowd-based venture capital fund where people could vote proposals that would then get funded and um, the DAO, in, in its very beginning, accumulated a very large amount of funds. Then, a bug that was undiscovered in the DAO code, uh, specifically a re-entrancy bug that allowed someone to call the withdrawal contract from within the withdrawal contract, um, sorry, the withdrawal function in the contract from within the withdrawal function of the contract allowed someone to drain uh, almost $300 million, if I remember correctly, from the DAO, or some ridiculous amount like that, um, into their own contract. This ultimately led to a hard fork uh, fix of Ethereum and also the split of Ethereum into Ethereum and Ethereum Classic. Um, and created a whole debate about moral hazard and bailouts and the immutability of Ethereum, uh, and left a bit of a wound in Ethereum that took more than two years to heal. Um, it was Ethereum's empty Gox moment, um, just different in some ways. Uh, a second one that um, also happened um, more recently was a problem within the DAI stablecoin when it faced its ultimate challenge, the collapse of Ethereum's um, exchange rate, the Ether exchange rate, by more than 55% in a single day, also known as Black Thursday. Uh, you probably remember that. It was in the beginning of the pandemic and just after the stock market had crashed. And Ether, together with every other cryptocurrency, dumped 55%. Um, because DAI depends on over-collateralization, where you must maintain 150% of collateral in order to back your DAI as an absolute minimum, even contracts that were 300% collateralized, which means for every $3 they had funded, they only took out one as DAI, uh, even those ended up under collateralized. Now, in normal circumstances, the immediate response to that would be uh, through automated systems as well as manual interventions, people pump DAI back into the system in order to re collateralize their loans, or they put ETH as additional collateral in order to refund um, and re collateralize their loans. However, um, of course, during the time that Ether dropped 55%, uh, gas prices shot through the roof. It was very difficult to get transactions through. And um, that was compounded by another bug in the auction system uh, that allowed uh, some people to basically snap up some of these loans uh, for zero and uh, liquidate them. Uh, and that was a disaster. In the end, um, those loans, as far as I know, were re-collateralized uh, through a fundraiser that was done by MakerDAO by asking the holders of the Maker token uh, to um, put more funds into the system. And the damage was only about $5 million, and most of the people affected, I think, were made good, made whole. Uh, another example of uh, a cascade failure of multiple problems uh, all occurring at the same time. And of course, um, it was a bit of a black swan event because uh, a 55% drop in a single day had not been seen until that moment. Finally, uh, the third one, which is even more interesting, was the ingenious use of flash loans in order to exploit a weakness in the system. Here, a flash loan, as we said before, is a loan where you take money out in a transaction. That transaction, as it executes, creates a cascade of contract calls, and as long as the last event from the transaction refunds the flash loan, you are allowed to take that loan. By taking a flash loan of uh, more 
more than a million dollars, um, an attacker was able to create a cascade of contract calls, effectively using DeFi's composability uh, to create a brilliant scheme. In this scheme, um, a loan from the flash loan was split into wrapped Bitcoin um, and uh, Ether, and then was used to take a short position uh, in a decentralized exchange against wrapped Bitcoin, followed by a dump of that wrapped Bitcoin on the decentralized exchange, followed by a liquidation uh, of that short in order to gain uh, the difference and a repayment of the flash loan, all in a single transaction. Um, and uh, I believe uh, just over two million dollars was uh, exploited using this trick. So um, this is an example of unintended consequences when um, just like the good guys can do composability, well, so can attackers and an unintended consequence of weaknesses in futures markets and flash loans and various other components all used together to execute an attack. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like, and share. All my work is shared for free, so if you want to support it, join me on Patreon.